Greetings, travelers. Welcome to In the Cafe on Channel 42 Radio. This is DG Squared, and today we have a wonderful guest for our show today. Today, our featured guest is Chain Craze. Chain Craze, how are you today? Just fine. How are you? I'm great, thanks. It's good to hear from you. Um, well, how's the weather where you are? Oh, it's uh, pretty cloudy. A little sprinkle shower just going on here. Yeah, that's not too bad. A little refreshing uh, rain never hurt anyone. Whereabouts are you from? I'm from the central Arkansas area. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, there's a few of us around that, that area there. Um, I believe uh, our own leader, uh, NMS Cafe Lily Hop, lives uh, around that area, which is which is kind of neat. Yeah, so as I've heard, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I guess you got rain today, huh? Oh, well, kind of a bummer of a, of a summer day. Sort of. Yeah. How's, how's the summer been so far? So far, it's been kind of slow, but they've been doing odd jobs around town, that sort. That's always good. So, all right. Um, how long have you lived in Arkansas? All my life. Wow, really? That's amazing. So you know all the sites um, and all the tour attractions? Somewhat, yes. <laughs> One of these days, if I ever make it out there, you're going to have to show me around. Well, if I, yeah, sort of. <laughs> so, um, now, uh, how old are you? 21. Okay, so you're still, uh, you know, fairly into your youth. Um, that's great. What, um, this game is like four years old now. Um, how long have you played it? Well, for about three years now, at least. Okay. Were you a day one player? Unfortunately, no, I wasn't. Okay, so you got in just after the, the you know, all the, the bad media, I guess. Yeah, Pathfinder update. Okay, that's when things really started to get good. Yeah, I like the Pathfinder update. They, we, they introduced a lot of really, really cool stuff. Um, what, uh, what did you like about the, uh, the update that brought you to the game? What did I like? Um, let me think. Well, when the game was um, being announced, that's when I wanted to get the game. But then I finally got it back in uh, December of 2017. Okay. That's when I wanted to get it. So. Nice. So you're almost a legacy player. You've been playing for quite a while now. What um what keeps you playing for all this time? Like uh, that's four years, three years uh, owning a game. Most people usually move on to the other one. What what keeps you drawn? Well, there's two things. One is the updates. It kind of gets me back in, and I'm just like, what the heck is going on here? It's like, oh, that's how it works. So then I'll play around for a little bit. And the second part is just, you know, exploring a bit using the new features. Yeah. The, you know what? I, I love it. The updates are all free, um, and they, they keep adding all these great features to it. Um, and you never know what they're going to add next. That that's the best part. You know, we can speculate all we want, but when it comes down to it, they tend to surprise us with all these cool features. Um, I don't think and that's anybody... what I like. Yeah, yeah. Were were you expecting, you know, like a freighter, um, or a derelict freighter upgrade update? No, I wasn't, but I sure was happy when I first played in VR. It, yeah, that's right. Now, okay, so now you you just said that you have VR. Um, is that uh, something you picked up as soon as they introduced VR in? Play, uh, sorry, in the uh, No Man's Sky universe? That I did, and I had VR right before they announced it, too. Oh, wow, so you got in right before the uh, the big craze. Yes. <laughs> nice. Um, VR is really, really cool. I've tried it a couple of times, uh, only for short spurts. Uh, are you able to play for, for longer durations? Well, if I want raccoon eyes after the first 20 minutes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the little VR headset, it, it's somewhat bulky and cumbersome. Um, it's like strapping a couple of iPhones right to your uh, your eyes. <laughs> that it is, and there's yeah. nothing wrong with, you know, strapping a cell phone to your face or trying to cut off a few blood vessels to get that picture quality, you know? 
<laughs> you know, it was a lot of fun. Um, I have to admit, I had a lot of fun flying around in my ship in VR mode. Um, oh, that's just a game by itself. It, it, that was fantastic. I loved it. Um, it really felt good. The, you know, the, the extra craft, maybe not so much. It was a little claustrophobic in there. Um, but I, I was really impressed with how they managed to integrate the VR mode with, you know, everything else that works in the game. Now, that's what surprised me, too. Yeah. Um, except for sitting. Um, as we found out prior to the show, the sit option just doesn't seem to be there uh, for for VR mode. So, HD, let's get on that, because even VR players need to sit. Yes. <laughs> so, um, I see what you're wearing today. You've got um, a pretty snazzy outfit. You're, going, you're rocking the uh, blue, red, white, and blue. Um, looks pretty darn good, I must admit. What um, what made you decide on this was the color scheme and uh, outfit that you wanted? It just came to mind because I watched Captain America or something like on TV, and I was like, hey, that's what I should do. So then there you go. That's where I got the idea. Well, that's very patriotic. Um, and, of course, Captain <laughs> uh, Captain America is a great uh, uh, Marvel superhero. So, you know what, that's, that's a great person to uh, model yourself after for sure. I like uh, what you've got here. Um, looks really, really good. Big shoulder pads and the, the helmet, the anomaly helmet. Um, have you tried other uh, character outfits before? Or is this I tried first? to do a German flag. Yeah. Well, I kind of got discouraged and saw a ship I wanted to buy and then got sidetracked. <laughs> well, that's, that is No Man's Sky, the great distraction. Yes, very. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many times a ship has gone and distracted me and uh, taken about two or three days away from what I was actually doing, and then, then I have to remember what I'm doing again, and that, that always makes it fun. <laughs> but, um, now, uh, have you have you spent any of the uh, Quicksilver on, on some of the new items, the massages or anything like that? What, what interests you in, in uh, the Nexus? What interests me the most? It's more likely, you know, selling stuff for nanites or uploading discoveries and unlocking new technology. That's what I'm most interested in. Yeah, I definitely like the technology. I like seeing more technology introduced. We definitely need more on, on a few items, um, the living ships especially, I think. Um, what do, you, what do you think of the freighter update? So we got the derelict freighters. Um, they also gave us, you know, the ability to increase our freighter size, including the small freighters. Is that something that you were hoping for or looking forward to? I kind of was, and then I was really into it when I found a bug to where it doesn't use storage augmentation, so I just exploited the heck out of it. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think I, I tried that, um, and I found out the same way you did on one of my saves that... Uh, the uh, the storage um, modules, uh, there was a bug where you used one and it, it would give it back to you and you could just use it over and over and over again. I, th I think they've since patched it, um, but a fun bug nonetheless. Uh, for once, uh, a bug goes our way. I, ha I have to admit, that was pretty good. <laughs> yes, I uh, hate to admit, I did have a lot of fun with it. Well, you know what? Every once in a while, it's it's okay. I think um, you know all the bugs that we have to endure uh, throughout the time playing the game. Um, sometimes when a good one comes along, I think that's okay, and, and and I think HG is probably okay with it as well. Do you like? Yes. The, yeah. Do Do you like the um, the new missions that they offer for the derelict freighters with the the aliens and the and stuff like that? Well, I wish. Um... I shouldn't say wish because I feel like that it's going to stay this way, but no. I bet they're going to add a whole lot more variety to it because right now you got cold spaces with heaters, then you got those little buggers that just come on out of their little nests, so you got to take them out. Yeah. Go around and find units, and well, that's just about it. Yeah, I can see an awful lot more potential with it. Um, I like how they've made it so every every freighter encounter is different slightly. Um, that's cool. I like the storylines. Um, I think you're right. We, we do need to see more different little types of aliens and, and critters that are running around, um, or anomalies, um, <clears throat> you know, or per perhaps a, an area of space where it's just exposed and, and you have to sort of float around to, to get to things. Um, there's some really cool things in it that, that could be added, I think, definitely. But it's a hell of a great start. 
I would really play the heck out of this game if they introduced EVA missions. Okay. Do you, you want to describe what that means? Extravehicular activities, you know, exiting the ship in the middle of a vacuum and use a propulsion system on your back to get around, that sort. That would be very cool. Yes, you've got your jet pack. Why not use it in space, right? Yes. Yeah, I think that would be a really good idea. Um, you know, like a, an open cavity or the cargo hold, maybe, you know, the, the, the door is unlocked and it's open. Um, stuff's floating around. Perhaps you could, you know, jet yourself out and, and have to collect certain things. Um, that would make for a really interesting uh, gameplay for sure. Um, what about asteroids? Would you like to, like, land on an asteroid? Oh, goodness gracious. Well, my first wish was that they kind of spaced them out a bit. And kind of, you know... Yeah, I know what you mean. Spread them out. Instead of, you know, every two seconds of pulsing, that you know, a little bit further apart, I think, would make the game a little bit more interesting. Definitely. Um, I'd like to see more minerals that are, or, or items that are available to mine through the you know, the, the asteroid fields that they put out there. Right now, it just seems like they're they're only there for, you know, tritium or a couple of other elements, which you may or may not need. Um, more variety is definitely needed in that, in that regard, I think. It should come pretty soon, yes. Yeah, yeah. What, um, what keeps you playing the game? What keeps me playing? Mainly the new updates. That kind of keeps me occupied. Yeah, yeah. I like how they've spaced them out nicely. Every couple of months, they drop a, just a little one on us. Keeps us occupied for, you know, a little while, a couple of weeks, or maybe a little bit longer, depending on how much time that we all have uh, to play. What um, what do you like to do in the game? Like, what's, what's your favorite thing? Play at my own pace. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I think that, that sort of goes with a lot of other players. Is We just like to screw around at our own pace. Uh, whether it's building or ship hunting or whatever, um, are are you much of a builder or a ship hunter or or something? What is there something that you're like specifically really good at? I'm more of an explorer, okay, because I just normally kind of automatic with my mind. Like sometimes I kind of catch myself just not thinking, and then I just appear in another place. So yeah, yeah. I definitely like to explore too. Um, you know, whether it's in space or on on the planets. Um, it, it always makes things really interesting because, you know, one day you might might be bored doing one thing. You can just go warp out somewhere and explore a new new system. Um, are, are you big on planetary exploration? Uh, not particularly, but now since I got VR, I really want to try everything that there is out there, if yeah. I can. Yeah. Oh, definitely. There's, it's definitely worth it. Um, all of the exocraft, they're all a little bit different inside of their cockpits. Um, really, really kind of cool, hard to get used to on VR, but, um, definitely very cool. Um, have you got all the, the uh, exocraft? Not all of them. No, still missing a couple? Well, I tried all of them, but on my other save, I still need to get all of them. Okay. Yeah. Well on your way then. What do you think of the Minotaur? Was that something that you were looking forward to? Yeah, it's kind of wonky though, but... I haven't tried it out in VR yet, but I did on single player, but I didn't really like the aiming on it. Yeah, it was a little bit awkward. Um, I, I remember, you know, back in, in the original days, you know, when the Colossus and the uh, Roamer first came out, um, I, I believe that was, uh, was it Foundation? It may have been Foundation. I'm not sure. Um, when they first came out, the aiming was really messed up um, and they made some improvements with it as they listened to the fans um, I'm hoping that we're gonna see some improvements with the mech um, the aiming the walking uh, just general overall movement of the uh, uh, of the mech um, are you are you more of a, a you know like driver or do you like to like walk around kind of thing well, normally I just drive to one location, like a huge open meadow or probably in the middle of a forest, and then I get out on foot, so it's kind of half and half. Okay, that's not bad. What, what's your uh, preference? you like the roamer, or are you a nomad kind of guy? I'm more of a nomad, because I, could, I can go over both land and water. Yeah, so. I do like that option. That would be really cool. I'd like to see a am more amphibious-type vehicle. I mean, even though our vehicles can go underwater... I would like to see something that, that kind of maybe goes both. Um, 
or even a, like a low flight, uh, low atmosphere plane um, kind of a ship. I think it would be kind of neat. Uh, to be like a hovercraft? Yeah, you know, something that flies but doesn't, that isn't able to go into space. Um, I think that would be kind of neat for like racing um, or, or just, to, you know, exploring, you know, a planet on a, you know, maybe a faster scale of going from point A to B. Um, but I think that would be really kind of neat to be able to have like a, an air vehicle um, that's, that's limited to planetary use only. That might be kind of neat. So what um, what brings you to the cafe? You've been a member for jeez, uh, five hundred and some odd days, five hundred and eighty three days. I think. Yeah, it's quite a while. That's a few years. Um, what originally brought you to the cafe? I'll just uh, try and check out gaming communities, and then I found this one. It was pretty active uh -huh. and nice. Well, we do advertise a chill atmosphere. Um, you know we. we we always want to support our, our members, um, but you know we we have a certain vibe at the cafe, um, and we just sort of want to always keep that going. Um, it's always so friendly uh, and and willing to help out other travelers. Um, I've seen you in the cantina chat room from I think it was pretty much since day one since you joined the cafe, uh, and you're always there. Um, you know I I won't say every day, um, but you know. Um, more days often than not uh, I see you chiming in and taking part in the chat and, and some of the conversations in there um, what uh, wh what interests you in you know the amino uh, most is it the chat rooms do you like reading the posts um, what what keeps you riveted in the uh, the amino community it's just a dedication to the community that's what I actually like really makes me glad yeah you know, having a community really is, is an awesome thing in the game. Um, it works hand in hand with with a game that is originally not not meant as a multiplayer game, um, but over the years it seems to have evolved into something very very special. Um, and the community and the media platforms that are around it are also equally as special. Um, do you have like a preference? Are you uh, obviously you're on Amino an awful lot? Do you use Discord much? Uh, I do have it. I joined a few servers, but I don't really talk to anybody in there. Okay. So, yeah, Amino is your preferred uh, media platform for uh, No Man's yes. Sky. Yes. Right on. You know, it is for me as well. Um, I've always loved Amino and, and found it to be one of my favorite platforms. It's it's colorful. It's got motion and movement. Um, and it, it just seems to work very, very well um, as a companion app for No Man's Sky. Indeed. Yeah. Now, um, around us here, we've got these glitches all over the place. Uh, what do you think of those? Do you, do you like the glitches that they've added in the game? Would you like to see more? I would definitely like to see more. Yeah, so would I. Um, we've got, uh, I won't say a limited amount, but there is a few that are there. Um, and there, there definitely could be more available made to us, for sure. Um, that would make for... A lot more fun in gameplay um, and more things to collect as well because I've, I've enjoyed collecting them um, the whole way through um, playing around with them using them for your builds um, you can get really creative I have to admit I really like them what's your favorite glitch piece oh how'd I have a <laughs> I have no idea I usually don't go out and collect them on my own well, I have plenty available. If you need one, just let me know. I can uh, pass a few off to you. Um, I think for me, I really like the glitching separators, um, and I like the capillary shells. Um, they, they have a really nice look, and you can color them really, really nicely. Um, and, of course, with the update, um, they really improve the color and um, the shine that gives off on, on all of the, the glitches. Um, some of you may have noticed that the... Uh, glitches I have in the studio are a little bit brighter than they have been in the past so that's kind of neat how they've they've boosted the color on all of the glitches the bubbles especially what um, what is your favorite multi-tool hmm I would actually say the rifle if that's 
what you're asking, I think. It is. Um, you like the oh, rifle yeah, yeah. style. Yeah, okay. So you like the rifle style. Um, do you like load it out with all kinds of weapons, or do you have just a, like one specific that you that's your tried and true method? One specific, so I have to keep switching over so many different tools. Yeah. Keep it simple. Okay. You know what? That's a good way because you can load up one specific thing really, really heavy. Um, so you like the rifle style? Do you have like a, an alien or an experimental? Oh, hang on. There it is. Let me uh, get a close-up of that. Nice-looking gun, and it goes with your outfit very nicely, too. Great color Well, I've been scheme. trying to find the perfect one. Yeah, yeah. Great color scheme. You really did a good job with that. I just came across it randomly. <laughs> nice one. It's nice when you get now those random can... finds. Now, since we can customize freighters, now we need to go for ships and multi-tools next. I agree. I agree. I love to be able to customize our multi-tool a little bit more. Maybe not so much with slots, but, um, you know, like components that you can sort of, you know, maybe you can earn an upgrade to attach to your gun or, or maybe a scope or recoil. I'm not sure. Any kind of handling would be kind of neat. Um, there's some really cool stuff out there. They did introduce a new piece of technology. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of this one or not. It was all the craze for a couple of days there. The uh, incinerator. What uh, What do you think about that? The incinerator. The incinerator. Yeah. What is that? Okay. Well, it's a flamethrower, um, for lack of a better word. Um, it is not available fully in the game yet. So if you're lucky... Uh, you may be able to find a, um, you know, like a, a, an S-Class uh, location or, or any location for that matter for a multi-tool. Um, and some of them have the new technology in them. There are no upgrades for them yet, and you can't purchase the blueprint. But it is in some of the newer uh, multi-tools, um, and it's uh, labeled as the incinerator. Um, if you buy one of those multi-tools, you can use it. Um, and from my experience so far, it's pretty overpowered. Really overpowered, actually. <laughs> I shall find out. I yes. shall find out. Yeah, there's, um, I think there's a couple in the Cafe Unity one uh, area there uh, where uh, one is available. Um, <clears throat> I think it's uh, the experimental rifle with uh, the little spikes sticking out of the top. Um so that, that's always an availability to us. And now that we have three multi-tools um, at our disposal, I think that's, um, that's something that can definitely be done where you can just swap one of your old rifles and, and pick the, you know, a new one up. Um, and I'm looking forward to the technology when they uh, introduce that. Um, any uh, speculation as to when the, uh, the big update is arriving? Uh, when was the last one? Well, you know, it's kind of funny. They've they've added a couple of real small ones here over the last couple months, um, but they've been threatening uh, for a really big update, um, and they always seem to drop one around August, which was uh, anniversary of the uh, game's release. Kind of gets the gears turning in your head a little bit, eh? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to look it up right now. Hang on. Yeah, no worries. Um so yeah, I'm I'm hoping for some something some new cool stuff. Uh, they'll hopefully they'll introduce more storyline to go with the you know the the space uh, anomalies and so on, and the freighters, um, and a way to tie it in with the incinerator that would be always really nice. Indeed. Yeah. Just a moment here to look that up. See what you think. S class multi tool flamethrower incinerator. Yeah. Ooh, I got my interest. <laughs> I knew it would. <laughs> yeah, that it's um I've seen a few players use it and it is overpowered. It can take down a walker pretty fast. I watched Captain Admin uh, dispose of one very quickly. Uh, a co-pilot of yours over in the cantina. How long have you known Captain Admin for? 
quite a while. Hang on a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone is messaging me right now. Uh, <laughs> we've been talking for like over 40 minutes. It, it seemed like 20. It goes for a while, doesn't it? Yeah, we've talked for uh, a good time, uh, a good 20 minutes of recording time so far, and uh, a little bit of time uh, prior to that. I know, Captain, since like, I think it was since I joined? Could I be. Mean, He's been a regular of the cafe since, I think, since the beginning. I've seen a lot of people come and go, but yeah, he's, I've stuck around too. Yeah, Captain's a fantastic guy. He runs the uh, cantina. Um, I believe you are also a co-host uh, in the cantina chat room. Oh, yeah, I just... Yeah, I see that now. Yeah, which is always really cool. Um, like allows you the abilities to, you know, start up a chat room, um, you know, maybe play some music or whatnot. Um, the canteen is a great place to sort of hang out. Um, quite often we'll have after parties uh, in the cantina after, a, you know, a radio show on Channel 42. Uh, makes for a little bit of fun times just to listen to music. Um, and he's a great DJ. He's always got such great music that he puts on. Hmm. What kind does he put on? Uh, a bit of everything. He is a, an eclectic soul. He's He, he likes uh, a little bit of heavy metal, new age, um classic rock um hell i've even heard him put up some old you know dance dance songs <laughs> but captain admin is uh he's an avid uh, music listener um, and uh sometimes if you want something different ask captain admin he'll definitely give you a, a different uh idea on what uh, you should be listening to or what you could be listening to interesting yeah what would you like to see most in the game as far as if an update were to come out really soon? Well, there's actually two things. Mm -hmm. I want different kinds of flora because so far I've been seeing the same kind of plants on the same kind of planets. Yes. Flora would and be the interesting. Second thing, yeah, and a second thing I wanted... Well, I don't. Th I don't think. Um, I don't think like you know like skill levels are even required in this. I mean, we already got like technology, but I'm thinking more like you know like more of a variety for survival mode. Okay. Because so far it's just been nothing but a grind for me. Like you know, more resources go a shorter distance. Right. Yeah. They they sort of. They seem to have fallen a little bit short with the survival mode. You know, they they made it tougher by. You know, shrinking the amount of uh, quantities that you can have in your your cargo, um, and maybe a little bit more damage taken, uh, less output damage when you're shooting your weapons. I, I'd like to see a little bit more difficulty level with that for sure. Um, make it a little bit tougher, where you really do have to fight for your life every single moment. Um, I know myself, when, when, once I've got everything upgraded, there's really no difference, almost no difference between the different modes. Um, and I'd like, to, I'd like to see a noticeable difference between the modes for sure. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. What's your favorite mode? Well, so far it's normal because I could just grind and get along here and get the achievements going. Mm -hmm. So far I almost got all of them except for a few. Okay, so you're rolling along pretty nicely there. Excellent. What um, what's your what's your favorite style of ship? Do you like an explorer or do you like the fighters, or maybe you like sharks? fighters? Fighters, yeah. What 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 kind of fighter uh, do you like to, uh, the most? Do you like ones with like heavy wings? I'm looking for any kind that kind of has like you know, it kind of looks stiffer from all the others. Okay. Sort of like, you know, can be is always in the back and maybe like a bigger thruster or, well, wings for sure, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you one of those uh, weirdos that likes only one wing, an asymmetrical ship? No. 
<laughs> yeah, we no longer have that uh, option. Um, there, for the longest time, uh, one wing ships were a thing in this game. Um, they may not have been very popular, but uh, um, they're no longer a thing as uh, um, HG has put the wings back on them. Um, maybe intentionally, maybe unintentionally, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, I, I myself, I like to see a little bit more variety in some of the ships. Um, I definitely like the uh, asymmetrical style ship. So let's, let's go HG. Let's fix that if we can. Um, do you like, uh, do you, would you ever like trade one of your favorite ships for a new one if they were to introduce one into the game? It's more like, do I have to upgrade to this or do I have enough money for that? <laughs> Yeah, there's always ways of, of needing more money in this game. Um, it seems like you could farm every day and still need more and more and more money uh, because there's so many things to buy. Yeah, but that's you... why I just kind of, you know, go on freighter missions and send out my frigates out and then just kind of sell those resources over time. So that's why I kind of check back in the game and sell and yeah. kind of keep that going over time. Yeah, the frigate missions aren't bad. They they pay off pretty good. You can just sort of set them off, and then next day when you log back in, either repair them or, or collect the money, um, which is always nice, right, because it really don't have a lot, lot of work to do, right? Um, farming entails time and, and inventory space and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I remember back in the day when that was the thing that to make money was we'd all have these, you know, album and pearl farms or living glass farms. Um, and, uh, boy, the game sure has changed over the years, uh, to now where, you know, everybody's farming these crash ships and AI valves and, uh, all this other stuff that you can get in the game. Do, is there like a certain part of, of, of the game that you, you like really dislike? One thing I dislike is not having enough sound effects for everything. Yeah. You know, that's, I think that's a first. I don't think anybody has, has actually said that there's not enough sound effects. Um, I'm going to have to look into that. Um, it's not something that a, a normal person thinks every day of, you know, the sound effects that are in the game. We, they, we all just sort of take it for granted. Um, so that, you know, I'm going to have to look into that and see what, what uh, you know, what's lacking in the sound effects department. Um I love the soundtrack. Uh, 65 Days of yes. Static is, is fantastic uh, group. Um, and uh, I don't know if you've listened to their other music, but it all has the same sort of sound to it, the same genre. Um, really, really cool stuff. Um, I would like to be able to buy the No Man's Sky soundtrack in the stores, personally, <laughs> as a disc um, or, or digital copy, for sure. Um, I have not been able to find it except uh, on YouTube. So let's, uh, let's hope for that in the future. So let me um, expand on the sound effects part. Please. What really got me, what really got me into it was playing VR and Ace Combat 7 because you could fly and when you're tightly turning through the air, you can actually hear your canopy rattle. And that's what kind of made me think for a minute. Yeah, it does kind of do that. When you're in the, the low atmosphere, you can sort of hear the... Uh, your glass rattle uh, a little bit there, um, the wind blasting against the glass. Um, that is kind of a cool effect uh, that they've added in the game. Um, what do you think of clouds? Clouds, uh, they're kind of a bit, you know, I catch them a little bit if I should say that. But mm -hmm. I think some more think. could be done on them. Uh, they, yes. They, they tended to sort of be a... a almost a solid entity in the middle of the air. Um, I like to see a little bit more opaqueness. Um, what, what I find is a bit of a pet peeve, and although I like clouds, don't get me wrong, is when I fly into an atmosphere and you've got the clouds and, and, and everything blown against your windshield, you can't see anything, and then just out of nowhere you just slam right into the ground. Um, I like to That's see a annoying. little bit... Yeah, I like to see a it's... bit more definition in height between the cloud height and the ground height, where we actually, it would be nice if we had time to, you know, react. <laughs> when yeah, not scare the, the crap out of me when I'm in <laughs> VR. <laughs> That's right. And in VR, oh man, yeah, that, that would definitely scare you. When you hit the ground like that, um, oh boy, if it was, you know, permadeath, it'd be black screen right away. 
<laughs> have you have you had a chance to try the permadeath uh, style? I'm not touching that with a 20 foot pole, man. No, no, yeah, that's not your thing, eh? That's okay. It's not for everyone. Um, you only get the one chance, and uh, a lot of people feel that you know, if having that one chance, and if you die and lose all that stuff, it's it's just not worth it. Yeah, there um, could be like one glitch, you know, end you. Yes, yes, it can happen. Um, as a permadeath player myself, I accept those risks and 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 play with them. And, and should I die, I made a promise to myself not to get all upset. Um, just take it as it comes. Um, it's just a game, it's just a game mode. Um, but uh, yeah, the, there's a prestige to having a, a permadeath account because, well, obviously you haven't died. Um, but yeah, any bug could kill you, including you know um, falling off a, a you know a mountainside or a training post, or even being hit by a ship. Ships can hit you in the game, um, and and they'll get they'll you can take damage from that for sure. Um, but yeah, glitches, killing, getting yourself killed from a glitch. Although you would think it shouldn't happen, I like that it does happen because it 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 allows for that realism where, just as it is in real life, anything can happen. You could be walking across the street and a bus could just run you over. Um, or, or, you know, some could fall out of the sky and hit you. You never know. Um, and yeah. in No Man's Sky, it's it's a little of the same in that regard. Just anything could kill you, um, including those little crabs that run around, those pesky little critters. Let me tell you. <laughs> Do you have a, hey. like a favorite species that you like? Actually, I don't. No. Have, have you found, like, any diplos or, or any giant creatures before? Rarely do I ever find a giant creature, and I tend to stay away from them until I scan them and see if they're hostile or not. Yeah, yeah, that's always a good idea, because well, they'll take you down a notch, that's for sure. I can remember um, I had a giant pineapple one time that came up and squashed me. That ended my permadeath streak pretty fast. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's unfortunate. But, you know, like, like I said, um, you have to accept those risks when you, you start a game mode like that. Um, I wish I could have found out where that pineapple was and pay him, pay him a visit back again. But it was one of those unknown systems in an unknown part of the, the universe on a fresh game. Um, I didn't even know what the heck I was. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you upgraded your freighter since since everything? Like you, you, you mentioned you put the augmentation modules in there and, and increased the storage capacity. Have you gone out and got the technology and stuff like that for it? I'm still working on that. Yeah, I know. It's a bit of a grind. Um, there's been a few uh, posts out there where, um, you know, coordinates have been given where you can uh, take a portal to uh, systems that have uh, like S-class upgrades and so on and so forth like that. Um, hopefully we can find a system like that in the Uni Unity 1 region. Interesting. Yeah. Have you had a chance to come out to the Unity 1 region? Actually, no, I haven't. Well, you know that? I, I find that very surprising that nobody's invited you there yet. Um, you're a, a mainstay in, in our cantina, and you've always been you know, part of the Amino. Um, would you like to come to the Unity 1 area? Uh, sure. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Um, after the, the interview today, uh, or on Sunday, or wh whichever is, is good for you, uh, let us know. We'll send you an invite, and and you can you can be one of our neighbors in the Unity One area. Um, it's, Ooh, goody! Uh, yeah. I mean, we've designed it to be that way, uh, so that it, everybody's in close proximity, and and you can all sort of hang out. Um, we've got a planet, well, a system with multiple planets, and it, every planet has a whole bunch of bases on it. I think Heart of Unity has somewhat like 21 bases in the system, um, and you're welcome to build there as well. Well, I'm not much of a builder because I just put a box down and put everybody inside of it so I don't have to go walk that far or anything, but I should give it a try. You know, I, I didn't used to be much of a builder myself, um, and that, that would be my shtick. I would build a square box and call it home. Um, so I, there is no judgment there. You build whatever you like. Um, home is home, whatever, whatever you decide that, uh, it is to be, whether you're a glitch builder or just a, a square box builder, doesn't really matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter at all. It's, it's all for fun, right? I mean, 
how can you judge anybody for their builds? It's it, it's it's a roof over their head. It's it's a place that they have as a either a functional base or maybe it's a, an aesthetics kind of a base. Um, as long as you have one, it, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, we're just happy to have you with us. Well, I'm actually glad because this is my actually well my first interview. Well, I'm privileged. <laughs> I'm glad that uh, we've given you our first interview, uh, or your first interview. Um, it was my pleasure to uh, be able to share getting to know you with um, you know the rest of the cafe community. Um, you've been a mainstay here, and it's uh, it's good to get to know you um, on, on a little bit deeper level than just hello, how are you doing in in, in the chat room? Yeah. Uh, you know, have you got one of those streaks going in the Amino where, uh, you know, you've got like a 100-day streak or something like that going on? Oh, heck no, I didn't. Because as soon as I lost my, I don't know, like 12-day streak, I just like, ah, forget it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it keeps uh, it keeps you interested for a short while, and then you, you kind of get bored of that. Um, it's uh, The Amino is definitely for somebody who likes to chase red dots. Um notifications and those little things that pop up it's great for uh you know interactivity um and and of course chasing those little red dots around it it sort of fits in with my ocd really nicely <laughs> oh look there's a red dot somebody must need to get a hold of me and then you go and check and it's just somebody liked your comment but um you know amino is fantastic i like how it, it creates activity um and um and generates a you know a bit of a buzz right people make a post and then other people comment on it and it makes somebody excited about you know the things that they're putting out there <clears throat> um, you've made a lot of posts uh, you know in the cafe uh, a lot of them with your character and, and some of the you know adventures that, that you've you know gotten yourself into what uh, what's the future for chain craze in no man's sky Honestly, I do not know because I was slacking off a bit, but now I see that people are wanting me to come back. So I'm going to start content creating as soon as I um, get a, um, a pre-built computer coming in. Oh, nice. Because my little MacBook, it cannot run boot camp. It cannot run Blender. So right. I can't do 3D modeling anymore. Oh, that's a shame. You, yeah, you were, you're always talking about that in the, in the chat rooms. Um, and we're, you know, we always look forward to some new stuff that you were, you're going to bring out or, or some ideas yeah, that you had. I haven't made an update because it's kind of like, you know, disappointing because of the fact that as soon as I get this, I'm like, what the heck happened here? And it doesn't even work. So uh, now I just got to spend about 800 more dollars. Thanks. <laughs> uh, real life sucks sometimes, doesn't it? <laughs> well, there's always workarounds I'm getting to there. Yeah. It'll be soon. Nice. Well, hopefully, you know, the, those programs and the workarounds um, are there and, you're, and will be worth it for you. You've had some really good ideas that I've heard in the past. Um, some skits, um, movie ideas, um, integrating, yes. you know, hor your love of horror films with uh, No Man's Sky. Um, it seems this update is right up your alley and exactly what, you know, what you need to sort of keep you going and, and spur a little creative juices in your own self. Yeah. Damn it, cat. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, cat. <laughs> the cat wants an interview, on. too. Yeah, he's clawing the heck out of my arm right now. He's going oh, to dear. pet. Does he? Well, uh, I, don't, I don't mind you taking a moment to pet the cat. Um, you know, we're pet friendly here at the cafe, too, right? <laughs> well, this he's a 22-pound chonk. That's what he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I my I had a large cat, um, and uh, yeah, I, I get what you mean when you say chunk. <laughs> what kind of cat I is he? I just now notice. I mean, he's a he's an American short hair cat with Siamese. That's why he's got blue eyes and white yeah. hair. Uh huh. And I just now noticed that there is a huge spider right there on the floor. Oh my god. Oh, and the cat won't do anything about it, will he? No, he's just looking at me and it and just wanting to be pet. I'm yeah. very disappointed in him. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Cats really don't go after spiders much. Uh, I get the feeling they might be afraid of them too. Well, cats do whatever the heck they want. 
and now he wanted to bite my elbow. That hurts. <laughs> He's definitely got a personality. We got to get him on the show too. <laughs> yes, we do. What color is he? He's white with a bit of orange. Okay. That's kind of nice colorations. Oh, I hear him. Hi. Hello, kitty. Hi, kitty. <laughs> Be nice to Chain Crace. He's in an interview now. <laughs> What's your cat's name? Mr. Jingles. Oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, well, hello, Mr. Jingles. Welcome to the show. Um, yeah, yeah, hello, Mr. Jingles. <laughs> Be nice to Chain Craze now. He's our featured yes. guest. Well, I have um, one more question for you. Uh, this is uh, one of the uh, questions we ask everybody on the show. Are you familiar with uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? I've watched it so many times when I was a kid, and my well, grandmother adores it. Well, then this is right up your alley. Um, it's a, it's the same question I ask everybody else, and, and I hope to get your version of the answer. Do you, sir? Do you have the answers to life, the universe, and everything 42. in between? Oh, good one. 42 is a great answer. Um, we, we've done our warps out to 42. Uh, 42, you know, jeez. Um, how, how many things can you say about 42? Uh, it's, it, uh, I think it's the, the most used number, I think, in, in, in the numbers. Um, there's the asterisks. There's, there's so many things about it. Um, 42 has so much significance, especially to the cafe. Um, and, um, I think we're going to have to get you out to, uh, the 42nd galaxy. Have you done many galaxy, uh, jumping? I just only been to the second and that's it. No, yeah, well, we've definitely got to get you out there. Um, yes, you do. Yes. The 42nd galaxy. Um, it's, uh, the Zobringe galaxy and, um, uh, you know, uh, one of these days, um, when we bring you out to unity, uh, maybe possibly after the interview or later on this weekend, uh, we'll give you a little lift up to 42 as well. I'm off all week until next week. Oh, well, that's perfect then. Um, we'll, we'll find a way to get together and, uh, bring you out there. All right. Just set up a time and I'll be there. No problem. It's uh, lots of new exploring out there. Um, there's a, there was a select group of us that, uh, originally made the, uh, the uh, pilgrimage all the way out. We, we did it the hard way. We warped our way there. Um, and then, of course, the update came out and made everything easy again. So, um, yeah. <laughs> That's no man's sky, right? Um, you, yeah. you find a way to do something, and then about you know six months later, an update comes out, and that could have made everything easier. Um, but that that's part of the game, uh, and, and the fun behind it is we always find different ways of doing things um, and find ways of creating activity where there is none. Um, do you have any ideas, um, you know, for HG that, that might, you know, future updates or some things that they could add into the game? Well, for one, we already mentioned it, sounds. Yeah. Sounds is a big one. Yeah, I'd like to see more sound effects. Um, and more music as well. I want to see more music from 65 Days of Static, for sure, definitely. Me too. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very, very much, Chain Craze. Um, 42 is a wonderful answer, um, and I appreciate the time that you've uh, given us today to come onto the show and share with us a little bit about you. Um, we look forward to uh, seeing you hopefully on uh, Sunday. Um, we broadcast our show on Sunday live to the cafe members. And if you are available, we'd love to have you in the chat room, uh, to live chat and, uh, take part in some shenanigans as well. All right. Right on. Thank you very much, Jane Craze. Um, that is channels 42s in the cafe with Jane Craze, this last week's featured cafe member. Thank you very, very much.